What's good, y'all? Shagama Kyle. Welcome back to my channel. Make sure you leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And if you're new, make sure you subscribe. I'm trying to have 1,000 subscribers. That every subscriber helps. Over here on this channel, we make daily NBA content. So if you enjoy the NBA as much as I do, please subscribe. And today we're going to be talking about the Los Angeles Clippers and, you know, how well I think they're going to do this season and just what I think the end result will be for them this season, you know, what I think of their offseason moves and all that stuff. So this year, the Los Angeles Clippers, they went out in free agency. They went and got Serge Ibaka. They went and got uh, Nicholas Batum. They went and did a trade. They traded Landry Shamit. And I think a second rounder for Luke Kennard, and they re-signed him. They re-signed Marcus Morris to a $64 million contract. They extended Luke Kennard, you know, to a $64 million contract. And I forgot how much money they gave Serge, but it wasn't nothing too crazy. And, you know, notable things that, you know, that they lost. They lost Montrez Harrell. He went, you know, across the hall to the Los Angeles Lakers. And I think that was kind of a, you know, not a huge loss for them because they replaced him with Serge. But offensively, you know, they're losing some production off the bench. And, you know, they still got the classic, you know, Lou Will. They still got Pat Bev. They got uh, Patrick Patterson. And, you know, they still got their classic, you know, depth they had from last year. And then at the top, you have, you know, Kawhi Leonard and Paul George. And, you know, let me just say something to start this video off. People are taking, you know, those the last playoffs. They're making it seem like Paul George is not talented all of a sudden. He's still a top 15, top 12 player in the NBA. So don't get it don't get it confused. Paul George is still, you know, that guy. He still, you know, can ball. And Kawhi Leonard, Kawhi, Kawhi is Kawhi. Kawhi is always going to give you, you know, his 25 a night. Kawhi is going to, you know, be surgical in the mid-range area. He's going to get to the rim, you know, all that stuff. And, you know... The Clippers' defense, you know, in the wing, in the perimeter area, is always going to be great. They have, you know, Pat Bev, they have Kawhi Leonard, they have Paul George. It's always going to be great. But when you look at the the paint defense, when your best paint defenders are, you know, Serge Ibaka, you know, uh, Ibaka Zubak, like guys like that, how do you stop Anthony Davis with, you know, those guys? And I'm not saying basketball is a one-on-one -on -one sport. Obviously, there's going to be help. But I don't think that Serge Ibaka and Ibaka Zubak is the guys that you want to, you know, be your Anthony Davis stoppers. Now, obviously, it's easier said than done to, you know, stop Anthony Davis, even with the perfect guy to defend him. But still, though, you would like to see, you know, more in the paint. And, you know, in my opinion, the Clippers did not, you know, fix their main issue from last year. And their main issue from last year, they didn't have a point guard. They had Kawhi Leonard out there trying to play mate. They had Pat Bev out there trying to play mate. They had, you know, Paul George out there trying to play mate. They had these non-passing, you know, playmaking guys, guys who just score and defend. They have these guys, you know, trying to, you know, playmake for the team. And that's not good because if Kawhi's trying to playmake, that means he's not looking for his own shot and it's not going to work. If Paul George is trying to playmake, he's not looking for his own shot and it's not going to work. So they needed to go on a free agency or the trade market and get, you know, a playmaker, you know, a Ricky Rubio type of guy, you know, somebody who can come in, knock down three-point shots and, you know, get to the room, you know, somebody who's quick but can also playmaking, you know, get them through their sets and their actions and their plays. So now this year they had to implement the triangle. And you don't know what the triangle is. It's, you know, the offensive system where, like, let's say, you know, player B is on the side and then player A is at the top of the key, player C is over there. It's literally a triangle on the court. So you pass it, move, pass it, move, pass it, move. And, you know, that we saw in the game against the Nuggets, that worked a lot for them. You know, they had about, I think, 17, 20 assists in that game. It was a crazy amount of assists, something crazy. And it seems to be working, but you would like to see, you know, them go out and get a playmaker. And, you know, it's easier said than done, but I think this Clippers team is pretty pretty much relatively the same from last year. Uh, Lan Luke Kennard is an improvement off of um, Landry Shamit, And Serge Ibaka is an improvement defensively and offensively, really, over Montrezl Harrell. You know, you get spacing. And Nicholas Batum is a good wing defender. He can, you know, playmake a little bit. He can knock down shots and, you know, the Clippers this, you know, offseason, they didn't have, you know, that one big crazy move to, you know, put them at the top of the West. To me, it's still the Lakers West. It's still the Lakers title to lose. But what I don't like seeing is, you know, people counting out the Clippers and, you know, acting like, you know, because they lost in the second round last year, they're just automatically trash. The Western Conference Finals this year, to me, still is Clippers versus Lakers. It should have been that last year, but I don't think that's going to happen again this year, especially after it happened last year. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, Kawhi Leonard is a top five player. Paul George is a top 15 player. They have solid depth around them. They have solid, you know, pieces around them. And they're no team to be messed with. Like, nobody wants to see them in the first round. Nobody wants to see them in the second round. And, you know, 
when it comes to the Western Conference Finals, I think that Anthony Davis is going to be a huge, huge issue for them. And I think LeBron is obviously going to be a huge issue for them, you know, because the paint defense is not elite. Like, it's not where you would want to see it. Serge Ibaka, you know, he has a reputation for being some amazing paint defender. But at this stage in his career, you don't want him to switch on the pick and you don't want him to guard, you know, a guy like Anthony Davis or Joel Embiid one-on-one. Not saying that it's just them, but not saying it's just him because Serge, you know, he can block shots. You know, he's big, he's strong, but he's not the, you know, paint defender. You know, he's not the anchor of the paint defense that the Clippers need right now to, you know, handle those big elite, you know, big men. So what do I think the ceiling is for the Clippers this year? The ceiling, I can most definitely see them winning the championship this year. Because let's say, you know, hypothetically, LeBron takes, takes a LeBron takes a major step back this year. Let's say, you know, Anthony Davis is an elite in that series. And let's say, you know, the Lakers' depth doesn't, you know, show up in that series or something. It's going to take a lot for them to beat the Lakers, I'm not going to lie. But Kawhi Leonard has shown that he can, you know, go crazy in the playoffs. We saw what happened in 2019. Paul George, like, in the playoffs is always something, you know. His shoulder is injured, you know. His leg is injured, uh... You know, in the bubble, I'll cut him some slack. You know, mental health issues in the bubble. So I'll cut him some slack for that last thing. But if Paul George stinks it up this season in the playoffs, there's nothing nobody can say to him. He's going to be, you know, one of the all-time worst playoff performers because he plays well in the regular season, MVP level in the regular season. Playoffs come around, he's nowhere to be found. That's, you know, terrible. But I can definitely see them winning the 2021 championship because they still have a great team there. It's just that... They don't have the paint defense for, you know, guys like Giannis, guys like Joel Embiid, guys like Anthony Davis. You know, these elite slashes, these elite big men, they don't have, you know, the paint defense for it. Now, it's going to be hard to stop Paul George and Kawhi Leonard, you know, either way. But I feel like a team would have an easier time, like a team like the Lakers or, you know, a team like the Bucks would have an easier time stopping them than they would stopping, you know, the latter. Like, they would, you know, stopping the Bucks or the Clippers. I mean, the Bucks or the Lakers. So, and you know, what's the floor this season? I can't see them losing in the second round or the first round or missing the playoffs. I think the floor for them this year is the Western Conference Finals. The ceiling is the 2021 championship. And that's just honestly what I think. I'm not counting them out as a championship team. Losing in the playoffs doesn't just, you know, snatch away Paul George's talent. It doesn't make Kawhi Leonard, you know, less talented. They lost to, you know, a defensive, a offensive scheme. They couldn't handle Jokic. The same problem that, you know, killed them last year. It's probably going to kill them again this year. They didn't have, you know, an elite paint defender to, you know, handle a guy like Jokic. And Jokic burned him every time they tried to double him. So, hopefully, Ty Lu and, you know, his new coach. And, you know, Ty Lu is known for making adjustments on the fly. And, you know, he did a lot of that in Cleveland. You know, he saw him do things over there in Cleveland when he won a championship. And hopefully this year he can, you know, get it out of these guys that y'all need to win a championship. We didn't, you know, trade all those first-round picks for nothing. We didn't give you all this money for nothing. Like, y'all need to, you know, perform. But, yeah, I think they're going to championship. And I think their floor, I can't see them not being in the Western Conference Finals this year. But, yeah, if you say to the end of this video, thank you. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next one.